what is zone js i have no clue okay so zone js is angular's current they're 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 talking about going to a zone list model with signals um but zone js is if you think about side effects side effect is just taking uh, a a a measurement of an input and an output, right? Mutating outside of the context that you're within, right? So all input outputs can be defined as a side effect um, because you're not within the system itself. If you type in a key on your keyboard, you are the external force. If you're seeing something on screen, your screen is the external force. There's some external force that is being applied, right? So Angular was like, hey, we know which inputs and outputs the user can have we are on the browser what if we became the browser what if we patched every api that could ever input or output and use that as our change detection mechanism it's a little like I, I'm, I'm abstracting a couple of layers here but that's effectively what it is and then they have like a, a task management layer so that you're able to like detect like, like, okay, this input happened here, so we should localize the 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 change detection within the like it's it's super interesting from an architecture standpoint. And it's also probably why the performance has like teeter tottered between good and, and frustrating at times. Um and it's been a fun building, but it's hard to explain uh at a high level in code, if that makes sense. It, it seems crazy it's it's like sci-fi but it's not sci-fi and it's in code uh and it works for some reason i think it is an interesting point and it is interesting to note that side effects are often the things that lead to the most complexity in frameworks so if we think about react a lot of the complexity in react is like they want this sort of like algebraic type system or whatever you know this like like they want to do side effects in a very particular way and, you know, suspense and all that sort of like bloomed up from from those ideals. And it's it's just an interesting observation. So like zone being a, a rather mm -hmm. large area of complexity and Angular and suspense and, and related features in React, um, you know, why signals get a lot of attention, not just for state management, but for like their impacts and handling side effects and stuff like that. So it's, it's just interesting note. And I would yeah. be really interested to see if you cover this and how you talk about it in the books, because this is like a really, really, uh, it would be a fun topic to compare all of the frameworks and how they think about side effects. Yeah. So, so side effects are actually the longest chapter in my book. Uh, there, it's like 10,000 words uh, because th they're just that complicated. So, so I'm going to, Justin, I'm going to take your words and I'm going to morph them a little bit to make the, the side effects even more predominant in the context of a framework. So, so let me start with a question or two. What is the predominant use case of a framework? Ignoring componentization, which we could argue is like the big one. But like outside of that, what is the big, big benefit that most people attribute to a framework? Standardization, making it easier to maintain. Okay. But look, why not use jQuery, right? Like, like why, why not build your own like, like DOM implementation? W what are you getting from having a framework that, that like jQuery might not? Well, when you use a tool like jQuery, in my opinion, is you mm -hmm. end up building a framework of sorts, right? Okay. It's just like you have these patterns that you apply to how you build products, how you build mm -hmm. UIs, and a framework like comes with opinions about those patterns. Right. And one of the things that I've noticed when you do build your own framework with jQuery, and, and this is, in my opinion, why these three frameworks took off the way they did, is that you end up with three renders, Right. And those re-renders tend to, to not be very localized. They tend to re-render huge parts of your UI, which cause performance problems, right? But we were talking about side effects as input outputs, right? What's rendering? An output. What is showing something to the, exactly. So the entire point of a framework, not just part of the point, the entirety of a framework is dealing with side effects. Whether we're talking about the rendering API, whether we're talking about the side effect API, whether we're like, like, Every part of the framework that's involved is a side effect, which is like, you know, you don't think about side effects that much when you get started with program. At least I didn't. Uh, so it's like kind of fascinating to come and realize like, oh, everything's a side effect. You know what I mean? Like, like this kind of like fascinating ideal of, of engineering. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think it is like I'm often reminded that one of the most important aspects when building software ever is thinking about data structures, uh, how you structure your data. Because it ultimately does have impacts for 
things like side effects. But there are these fundamental concepts, data structures, side effects, you know, that are so deeply ingrained and such a, like, they are the core essence of how we, or what software is, um, that we spend a tremendous amount of engineering effort on just these topics, you know, because mm -hmm. they are so pivotal to the whole software world. Yeah. And, and I want to know if this is just me, but I feel like when I started learning programming, no one talked about what a side effect was. No one talked about like, like, yeah, there was, there was data organization, but maybe this is just because I came from like a, a kind of self-taught journey. You know, like I, I, I kind of dropped out of high school. I didn't really do the college route too much. Um, so maybe it's just because I, I lacked that formalized education, but people would talk about pure functions and then never explain what a side effect was at a high level. And it was just this abstract idea that everything has to be pure without any context provided except for like math papers that I'm not going to be able to understand because I didn't do that. You know what I mean? Um, so I, I wanted to make sure that that when I was writing the book, I'm, I'm introducing concepts. Yes. But one, I'm introducing them as linearly as possible. There's no chapter that references something that you haven't learned already if it's not what you're actively learning. And then two, that I'm not going so far into the computer science world that I'm like losing my audience of people who may be learning for the first time. Did you had to build a, a like a topographical sort to like figure out what topics should be introduced first? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a weird feeling to be like, hey, by the way, we're going to talk about the VDOM in the third chapter, because like, like, like if you look at it from like ignoring that context, you're like, what are you? doing why are you introducing a timer before you're introducing inputs like user input and it's like well there's justification for it right um but it's uh it, i had to rearrange the book a lot i i would write a chapter and be like now nah, that belongs here no that belongs here um so it was uh, quite the challenge to build out this way